welcome to the first edition of The King's Court. Now, I'm sure you're wondering where I was pretentious enough to come up with that name, but I always use King of Promise or King's Promise as my um, usernames for things, and I felt like I would just keep with the motif and King's Court seems like a good place for me to come and just talk about the things that I want to because I've been for so long saying, oh, I'm gonna talk about something other than Teen Wolf. So here it is. Pop's newest train wreck, Justin Bieber, has recently come under fire for spitting on his fans. There are pictures and maybe a video, I haven't seen one, of him leaning over a balcony and just spitting on top of someone's head. Naturally, I would imagine that the person being spit on would be upset or angry or livid or heartbroken. Some type of negative feeling, but no. That little girl and a bunch others are like, oh my gosh, take the spit so we can make a clone of Justin Bieber. Let's be real for a second. One, why would you want to clone somebody who just spit on you so that there'd be two douchebags running around instead of just one? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Two, why would you even think that that was scientifically possible? I mean, I know we cloned that sheep like forever and a day ago, but where have you heard that full human cloning has been a thing. Let's be real, people. Use your minds. I know you have them, even though you're 12. I know that you know that this is not possible, nor is it wise. So you should probably take that interest in science and channel it into something else, like curing cancer. We don't need another Justin Bieber. He is struggling on his own, and we don't need him to have a buddy to struggle with. Why can't you little children find somebody more appropriate to have like crazy fangirl crushes on? Like in my day, it was the Jonas Brothers. And the worst thing that they did was break up with Camilla Bell over the phone. And that was pretty trifling, but still it's not spitting on people. It's not getting kicked out of nightclubs. It was like childish antics. So I would advise moving over towards the Jonas camp because they just came back out and Nick Jonas just released that sexy picture of himself in the mirror, flexing all his godly man muscle. Which brings me to something else. Justin Bieber and Nick Jonas have been like pitted against each other in like a bunch of polls saying who's hotter. Is that really a question? Nick Jonas has the better body, the better voice. He's a nice guy. He acts like he has a good head on his shoulders. And Justin Bieber is just a tool bag. Like, I don't understand why there's a competition. Like, close your eyes for a second, and this is for people who are 18 plus. Close your eyes for a second and imagine a night with each of them. Justin Bieber would be so concerned with himself and just his own enjoyment that he would not even think about you. Like foreplay would be out of the question for Mr. Bieber because he doesn't have time for that. He has things to do and all he wants is for his own end game. Whereas Nick Jonas would probably cuddle you first, then give like expert floor play, and then the D would be bomb, and then he would probably cry and hold you while he was crying. And in the midst of his sobs, he will write a Grammy winning song about the experience. And then you're famous, he's still famous, he'll probably marry you afterwards. And then if it doesn't work, you can take half of his money. This is clearly the smarter marketing plan. Seriously, who would take this over this? I know we all have our personal preferences, but let's not be stupid. I don't know if you've heard, but Lindsay Lohan is once again out of rehab. This time she actually stayed the full allotted 90 days and in the picture she looks really good, but I find myself having difficulty 
believing that she's all right this time because one, addiction is a constant struggle and two, she's fallen off the wagon like 50 times. I say this time, if she falls off the wagon, they need to forego rehab, they need to forego jail, they need to send her to the South like they did in Georgia Rule and give her to an angry black mother who will whip her into shape. They need to send her to Big Mama in North Carolina and let that lady whip her into shape like she would have done one of her own children back in the day. Like, she needs to sit down and make that girl shell peas and get firewood and be in the house by eight o'clock p.m. That's how you get somebody back on track because after you've lived that, you wanna go back to your luxury and you do not wanna mess up again because you do not want Big Mama to come and embarrass you on the red carpet because you know she will. She will show up in her house coat with her slippers on and beat your ass right there in front of everybody. And then drag you back to North Carolina cause you about to shell some more peas and dig up some more potatoes because that's your punishment. Maybe I should start this facility. I got a lot of old people in my family that I can use. Hmm. Big Mama's Beat Your Ass Rehabilitation Center. That sounds good. I'ma patent that. Don't try to steal it from me. Recently, Taylor Lautner has been seen holding hands with Marie, last name is Super Greek, and I think they want me to believe that they're dating, but guess what? I don't. I believe that Taylor Lautner is gayer than a box of rainbows dipped in glitter left at a pride parade. You don't have to admit it right this minute, but you know you've thought it and you know it's true. He can hold hands with all the chicks he wants to, but I will not believe it. He has too much in him for me to believe that he is ever going to just like lie with a woman because he wants to. Mm -mm. He not about that life. I can tell. He wants to rub up against Robert Pattinson and rub up against like Logan Lerman or something and just make adopted babies. I refuse to believe him and Marie, last name very Greek, are a real thing. I'm sorry if you disagree because I know there's a lot of fangirls who are like, oh my God, Taylor Lautner, marry me. It's, it's not gonna happen. So you need to put your ducks in a different row because Taylor Lautner is way gay. I just read the funniest headline that I have seen in a while. Simon Cowell expecting baby with friend's wife. That is so cut and dry and to the point, I didn't even need to click on it because I got everything from the headline. Simon Cowell has slept with somebody else's wife that he has once called a friend and has put a baby inside of her. I don't need any details. I don't want any details. This is just golden. That is perfect. Just Simon Cowell expecting first child with friend's wife. Just the classic tale of trifling ass folk. I love it. At this point, we all know that the music industry is all about recycling things. What was hot for you is hot for somebody else because it's already been proven. Or at least that seems to be the marketing strategy behind Katy Perry's new perfume, Killer Queen. Can you see where this is going? The Killer Queen promo is deathly similar to the O2 priority ad for Beyonce's Mrs. Carter tour right down to the powdered wig and everything. They are seriously in the same place, in the same room, except Katie's looks cheap. And I'm not trying to come for Katie because I know she can put out a good product and she's not broke. But if you put her video next to Beyonce's video, there's no competition. I just don't understand. Beyonce is turning it out. She's like got that like lean thing going with her good wig and good outfit. And Katie looks like Party City. If we could put it into like a good analogy, Beyonce would be like Fruit Loops, the name brand. And Katie would be like the Fruit O's grocery store brand that doesn't even come in a box. It comes in that plastic bag thing and you gotta roll it up and put a clip on it rather than just close the box. So I'm just saying like, Katie, come on. You have a creative team and you have 
tons of dollars because Teenage Dream sold real well. You were not broke. And you have John Mayer's money to play with. So you could have gone over the top with this Killer Queen thing, but it was just hazy and it looked like a brothel and you looked like a hooker with that red lipstick on and that cheap wig sitting on that overturned throne. It wasn't cute and it just was just too Queen Bee for me. And I just, that that's not you, girl. You need to do fanciful, fancy, like fantasy things like you did in that Wide Awake video. That was cute, that is your lane, you need to stay in it. Don't merge into like regal territory because Beyonce will stomp you out every time. That is all the topics that I have for this edition of The King's Court. So make sure you subscribe, leave comments, give me some feedback so I know how to progress moving forward because I want to grow and be a beautiful YouTube butterfly and just produce such a nice product that you keep coming back for more. So help me to help you, okay?